Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts. I am so glad that I got an opportunity to get my video released in regards to NASA's Muamua related mission before more FAA crap came out. And I must say that this is becoming the new starliner of space flight content. I am getting sick of reporting on this stuff. And as near as I can tell, this is just the beginning because Elon Musk, as most of you probably know, is planning to sue the FAA for regulatory overreach. Although I have to admit, I don't see how Elon has enough time to run his companies right now, given the fact that he has posted hundreds of politically oriented statements and shares and such on Twitter ever since he made this posting at 1.37 p.m. on September 17th, 2024. So a little over 24 hours ago and seriously, I could not find this post amidst the morass of politically oriented posts that this guy is making right now. Dude, I could not run my channel if I was posting that often on Twitter about the election and Trump and Harris and all this other nonsense. The other things that SpaceX is working on is far more important than any of the rest of this stuff. Run your company. Okay. I'm done with that. Let's go ahead and talk about what exactly he's annoyed about. As we all probably know, the FAA has proposed $633,009 in civil penalties against SpaceX, a parking ticket to Elon Musk and this company, and whatever he's going to end up paying his lawyers trying to fight the FAA over this is going to run into a hell of a lot more money. Will it create some sort of systemic change at the FAA? FAA? Well, maybe assuming that these fines are completely without merit. And the FAA was kind enough to send me copies of the letters in detail explaining the reason for the civil penalties. I'm going to skip over most of the boring stuff, stuff that just pretty much talks about facts that we already know. And instead, let's go ahead and talk about May 2nd, 2023. SpaceX submitted to the FAA a request to revise its approved communications plan. On the listed dates, the FAA informed SpaceX of the following. On June 15th of 2023, the FAA would not approve SpaceX's proposed new communications plan before a scheduled June 18th, 2023 launch. And then on June 16th, 2023, the FAA would not issue a modification to SpaceX's license before a scheduled June 18th, 2023. 23 launch. So, according to them, they sent two notifications to SpaceX telling them that they were not going to green light a launch scheduled for June 18th, 2023. And again, this is because of a new control room that had not been approved at the time, allegedly, and also a T minus two hour poll that had been removed from SpaceX's launch procedures but had not yet been approved by the FAA, allegedly. On June 18th, 2023, SpaceX conducted a launch of the Falcon 9 PSN MFS mission. So they launched anyway. And during the launch, SpaceX made use of their new control room, Hangar X, even though the FAA said that wasn't okay yet. And also, they did not include the T-2 hour poll in its launch procedures and did not conduct a T-2 hour poll during the launch countdown. So even though they had submitted a request to the the FAA to change their launch procedures, to use the new launch control center, whatever. The FAA had not yet approved it at the time of this launch, and so SpaceX was in violation of FAA regulations. Again, allegedly. Who knows exactly what happened? That's probably going to come out in court. So that's one of the fines. And then the other one is very similar. On July 19th, 2023, SpaceX submitted to the FAA a proposed launch license update reflecting a new rocket propellant farm. By the way, 
Falcon 9 uses RP-1, not methane, so we're talking a whole lot of kerosene here, but regardless, on July 26, 2023, the FAA informed SpaceX that the FAA would not approve a modification to SpaceX's launch license to permit a new RP-1 prior to a scheduled July 28, 2023 launch. And on July 28, 2023, SpaceX conducted a launch of the Falcon Heavy Echo Star 24 Jupiter 3 mission. During the launch, described in paragraph 6 above, SpaceX utilized a new RP-1 farm that was not included in its explosive site plan to fuel the launch vehicle. Now, once again, what appears that happened here is that SpaceX submitted this change on July 19th, 2023. That's only nine days prior to this Falcon Heavy liftoff. Now, it it doesn't surprise me terribly much that it took the FAA longer than nine days to get all of this approved, but once again, was it properly communicated to SpaceX? Did SpaceX really only give a nine-day notice? Well, again, all of this is probably going to come out in court, and in these letters, the FAA also cite a number of regulations, legal justifications for the fines, including the following. A launch operator must ensure the representations contained in its application are accurate for the entire term of the license. A launch operator must conduct a licensed launch and carry out launch safety procedures in accordance with its application. A launch operator must ensure that only those explosive facilities and launch points addressed in the explosive side plan are used and only for their intended purposes. And by the way, the FAA also mentioned that a third penalty was issued in February of 2023 for a failure to submit launch collision analysis trajectory data directly to the FAA prior to August 19th, 2022 for a launch of the Starlink Group 427 mission. SpaceX apparently was required to submit the necessary data to the FAA at least seven days prior to an attempted launch and launch collision analysis trajectory data is used to assess the probability of the launch vehicle colliding with one of the thousands of tracked objects orbiting the Earth. SpaceX apparently had no argument with this fine, and they paid it. Now, in my opinion, Elon's war with the FAA is very poorly conceived and extremely risky if he ends up winning. That is to say, if Trump ends up getting elected and then Elon gets appointed to a commission that it can essentially gut the FAA, fire anybody that Elon doesn't like, and replace them with people who allow him to operate with impunity, well then, yeah, things look really good for SpaceX and Elon for four years. And then after that, all bets are off. And if he loses, if Harris ends up winning this election, then things could get extremely grim. Keep in mind that there is right now a moratorium on giving the FAA any sort of regulation over human spaceflight. Quote, Congress has limited the FAA's authority in specific ways. Under federal law, the FAA is prohibited from regulating the safety of individuals on board. This legislative moratorium, originally established all the way back in 2004 and extended multiple times by Congress, will now expire on January 1st, 2025. What happens if he aggravates the wrong person and they choose not to? to extend the moratorium after that. That means Polaris Dawn missions or Axiom Space missions, any of this stuff comes under the regulation of the FAA, meaning that they could shut SpaceX down in a huge way. Not only that, they could shut down any future manned missions to Mars as well. And as I said, getting Trump elected and giving Elon Musk essentially unlimited power only provides a four-year solution, and after that four years, there's going to be hell to pay in terms of revenge. That's just how politics work. So I don't see how this is going to end up with a good result for anybody, anybody that is, except the lawyers. Is the FAA an organization out of control? Are they guilty of overreach? 
I don't know. I'm going to need a lot more convincing than what I have in front of me right now. Based on all the documentation I've read about this case, it seems that the FAA was enforcing the regulations that currently exist as this agency is supposed to enforce them. Should the regulations be changed? Maybe, but until they are changed, the FAA has to enforce what they are obliged to enforce. And as I say, they gave SpaceX basically basically a parking ticket, a tiny slap on the wrist. And really, if this is the only penalty that SpaceX needs to pay in exchange for launching pretty much whenever the hell they want to and not when the FAA says they can launch, well, I'd say that's just the cost of doing business and not an example of extreme overreach. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. In less than 72 hours, I will be on a plane on my way to Cape Canaveral. Looking forward to bringing you some exciting stuff from there. So until next time, stay angry about space.